Okay, so as I've said, I've already uh, unboxed the Droid 4. I mean, seriously, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. And I've already uh, up uploaded uh, all my uh, contacts and uh, apps and all that stuff. So, we won't be getting into that today. But anyway, as you can see, like I said, because the uh, screen protector that they put on was originally for a Droid 3, which is cut a bit differently than the Droid 4, um, you can see that's why there's that huge bubble there. But he said that... Um, accessories and stuff like that will be coming for it in about a week or two, so uh, this is just a temporary thing until I get the actual thing. So, let's uh, take a quick look at it from uh, top to bottom. Okay, so top portion, got, the little, uh, got your little ear hole, and here is a uh, front-facing camera, which I really love. Um, this can take up to 720p video, so it is high def. And uh, moving on, I'm not quite sure how long the screen is, but I mean... If you guys have been following the Droid 4, you know the specs already, so I'm not gonna bore you with the nig with the nit So I'm not gonna bore you with the nitty gritty. <laughs> and of course, as always, you have the uh, menu button, home button, back button, and search button. So, and uh, let's turn this bad boy on. Which uh, the power button's right. Sh the power button's right here. Um, I think that's the hard reset button right there. There's the headphone jack. And the back, I really like the back. Um, it's actually rubberized, so you can't, you know, it's it, it's got a bit of a grip. I mean, granted, you can still slide it, but it's not going to go very far. And uh, here is the speaker. A little Motorola logo right there. And I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of hard to, okay, you can see it now. But it says 4G LTE. And that's the uh, one of the big things about this phone that I love. Here's the Verizon logo here, by the way. And, uh... Love this little grip. But anyway, um, here is the main camera. This can shoot up to 1080p, so full high def. Here's the flash. And this looks like a speaker, but it actually isn't. It's to open the case. You can't just pop it open like you did with the uh, previous droids, which uh, we'll get to here in a sec. And on the, uh, if you're facing the phone this way, it'd be on the left side. So left side. Uh, here is your uh, charger port right here. You focus in on that. Okay, so you got the charger port right here. And you got HDMI port right here. So if you want to watch uh, your high def videos on your TV, you can definitely do that. And on the other side, you have uh, just the uh, volume control or like a uh, little up down things. And uh, on the bottom, you just have the little uh, speaker hole right there. So yeah, um, I'll also show you how to open up the back, which uh, apparently a lot of people have been having problems with. So I'll just. Uh, do this really quick. Okay, so in order to open the back of this, which is actually kind of hard to do, one of my main uh, beefs with this phone, is you take this seemingly innocent little piece of plastic that came with the box, and you put it in here, this little hole that looks like a speaker, it looks like a little microphone hole, but it's actually to open the case. So you basically just, uh, you push it in, right? And then you uh, pull it back. And it just kind of comes out like that. And it's a bit stiff, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, you got this. Um, there's not really much to this, and because, uh, you know, the battery is uh, set up a bit differently than on uh, previous droids, it's set up more like the, uh, the Razer, where the battery is uh, non-detachable. You can't uh, take out the battery like you could with the uh, older versions of the droid. And uh, right here is the SIM card. I put my uh, camera card, the uh, original card for my Canon camera, in here. So it's got 32 gigs of a memory. And in order to get to it, you just lift this little thing right here. It says lift to access micro SIM. Just lift it up so it's kind of out of the way. Then you just uh, pull on the card like that. It comes right out. And conversely, to put it back in, you just uh, slide it back in here like right under this little metal sheath slide it in there you go just stop that and we're gonna put the uh, case back on this is something I kinda worry about this little thing right here which actually <laughs> I don't know if you can see that but there's a little bit of red ink on there and I actually used a really fine red pen in order to get in there because I didn't have the uh, little dongle thing here at the time, I didn't have this little dongle thing, so I just improvised and used a red pen, and it, as you can see, there's a little bit of ink on there. 
So, and I'm also kind of worried that this is the only thing that's really stopping the case from opening. You know, I think that'll probably uh, come right off. It seems really flimsy, but that's just my opinion. Another thing that kind of worries me is the back of this case is actually plastic. It's not metal like it was in uh, previous versions. So, I'm a little worried about that, but I do like the little grippy. So, yeah, <laughs> there's that. So, we'll just put this back on. Just kind of lift it up a little bit. And you just slide it in, <laughs> or attempt to slide it in, I should say. This, like I said, this uh, putting the back case on is kind of hard, so yeah, bear with me here. Okay, back on. So I'll move this back into the case. Hold on just a sec. Actually, we'll just put that to the side and deal with that later. So anyway, getting to the real uh, nitty gritty of this phone are the uh, the features. Now, if you guys know, I previously had the uh, the Droid 2 Global. That was my very first introduction to smartphones. Before that, I just had like prepay and stuff like that. So, yeah, I really love the uh, smartphones and I love I mean, this upgrade is just, you know, miles ahead of my Droid 2, especially when you consider the speeds. So, yeah, I just open it up. And uh it shows that I removed the SD card and put it back, so it, it does that. Um, so here are my uh, apps that I have up here. They're kind of they're a bit similar to uh, what I had on my Droid 2 Global. You know, you have voicemail up here. Browser looks a bit different. It's no longer a globe. It's more of a map. So that kind of tripped me out a bit. I have a uh, Cracked.com. <laughs> they have their own app, so I often read their articles and stuff. eBay app, Gmail app, Facebook app, Speed Test app. Very useful, definitely recommend it. Google Reader, so I use I use that to read blogs and stuff like that. There's YouTube, Battery Doctor. Um, I originally had another battery saver program. I think it actually was called Battery Saver. But for some reason it was taken off the market so I couldn't get it back. So I had to use Battery Doctor. And I mean, Battery Doctor is all right, but I prefer Battery Saver. So uh, to the makers out there for of uh, Battery Saver, bring it back. I miss Battery Saver. And here's another app that my friend Sam recommended. It's called a TuneIn Radio. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you can basically listen to all kinds of different radio stations across the globe. I love using this because I can tune into some uh, Japanese radio stations, and it's pretty cool. And here's e Easy Tether, which I recommend using if you want to uh, tether off your phone um, and get some pretty good speeds off that. Um, uploading's a little, eh. But uh, that's okay. Then I put my uh, little alarm clock there because I like to set alarms and timers and stuff like that. Google Maps, um, Words with Friends free, the Google Market, and uh, down here are uh, the uh, you can't move these or deal with these at all, which is you know the phone, uh, text messaging, uh, the camera, and the apps that you already have. Um, whereas with the Droid 2 Global, you had a dedicated camera button, which is around hereish. Um, the Droid 4 does not have that. You have to actually have the phone on and, you know, press the camera button and there it is. So, um, while we're here, we'll actually examine some of the features of the, uh, camera. Um, this is just in standard camera mode. It's not, uh, in the, uh, camcorder or, like, a video mode yet. But, uh, I'll just open up a couple features. You can change, like, widescreen image, change video resolution, go as high as... If you're doing the front camera, you can go as high as 1080p or as low as uh, 320 by 240, uh, which is what a lot of my mobile vlogs are in. Um, you can do geotagging if you have uh, your GPS on, which uh, geotagging means that you can uh, basically, like, it puts a little bit of info in your, uh, in your uh, pictures. I'm not sure if it does it for video, too, but uh, I know it does it for pictures, so it, it shows you a little bit of info, like, where you were when you took the picture. Video stabilization, which is on. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, the storage location, which I have as SD card. You can have it emulate a shutter tone. And you can do the next, next one is like little effects. Like you can, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but you can change it to like black and white, um, like negative, and like a whole bunch of other like tones and tints and stuff like that. Um, here is like the scenes. Like you can do like low light mode. Um, you can do, here, you can do like macro mode, so if you're doing something close up, like I kind of am doing here, you can see the grains a bit more. Um, 
see it focuses in a bit more on the detail if you're a lot closer up but uh it's, it's a bit squirrely but that's okay but i normally just leave it on auto because i don't like to futz with the settings a lot uh let's see we got oops sorry <laughs> then we got different modes we got a single shot panorama which i haven't tested out panorama yet so i'm not sure where that stands uh multi-shot you got timer then you got uh, exposure which basically like makes it lighter makes it darker but uh yeah just I like to leave it in the middle so I don't have to futz with it like I said so just keep it at zero then you got the flash <laughs> the flash <laughs> you can turn it on or off you can turn it on you can have it auto flash depending on the uh, lighting I guess and uh, that's pretty much it so yeah you can do that here's the little um, now you can do here let me adjust the camera a bit you can do uh, like you know that for zooming this is a little zoom bar you can do it like that or it just kind of gradually zooms you can like tap up there to have an auto zoom up there you can tap up here to zoom in incrementally too see and then just you know do that and another thing I noticed um, doing that in order to focus you'll see that there's a little box up here it's a little tracking feature that tracks objects and faces and stuff like that so um, you can have you can just like press it and it'll like track something or focus in on something. Just like do a little tap or a double tap. And when you hear that little beep, that means it focused on something. So that's uh, what that beep was, if you were wondering. So then, you know, you can enable or disable their features. Just get them out of the way. Um, here is the little button that um, flips cameras, which we'll get to here in a sec. That takes pictures and that switches between camera mode and uh, video record mode. Up here is. Uh, your basic like uh, where uh, videos and pictures are you can just access that it's like a little gallery see there's a video I did and there's none left on this particular card so obviously that's why it's not doing anything you can share it you can uh, comment on it but you have to have a social network attached to it um, you can do upload delete you know all this yada yada so I'm gonna bore you with all that um, but anyway uh, let's get to the uh, the flip side. So in order to access the front camera, you just press this button. But uh <laughs> And now we're accessing the front portion. Um, the features are a bit different on the front portion because uh, this camera isn't quite as good. So you can only do so much with it. Um, like I said, you can, you know, video resolution's pretty much stuck at 720. Um, you can do one, one megapixel for the uh, widescreen. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, hold on a sec, before we get into this, um, did I mention, okay, the front camera is 6 megapixels, or, front camera is 1 megapixel, uh, this camera back here, the back camera is 6 megapixels, sorry if I didn't mention that, um, but anyway, getting back to the front camera, uh, you can still do geotagging, video resolution is pretty much stuck at 720p, um, you can have video stabilization, which, uh, Actually, video stab stabilization doesn't really work on the front one. It's, see, it's kind of grayed out. And you can access storage location, the shutter tone. And you can't do any of the cool, like, little... Like, you can't uh, have effects or do the scenes or anything like that. You can do uh, some modes. There's single shot, and then there's timer mode. And you can adjust exposure, and you can adjust flash. So, the front camera is kind of limited, but it's basically used for uh, very quick vlogging or if you're using like Skype or uh, whatever, uh, like video calling and stuff like that, whatever those programs are. So uh, that's the basic gist of it. So you know, you can take pictures and uh, flip it around again. You can access a uh, video mode, which uh, here, you know, it's pretty much the same dealio. Um, the only difference is uh, you can, sh there, the video modes are a bit different. So you have normal video and you have video, video message which video message I'm assuming is like a really tiny version of it or like a very uh, just like not a high resolution video so yeah um, but anyway switching back to camera mode we're gonna switch to the front camera which has uh, the bulk of the features and we're gonna switch to video mode so um, the features are about the same but they're a little different um, as you can see you can still adjust video resolution stabilization 
all that fun yada yada. You can still do effects, uh, but here's one of the main differences, um, is this, and I really love this feature. It's the audio, it's how you use your mic. Um, you can have it in a stereo setup, uh, where it's basically kind of like surround sound. You can have wind reduction, so if you're outside and there's a lot of wind going on, uh, it reduces that. And my personal favorite, concert mode. And what concert mode you know, basically does is it kind of uh, lowers the mic sensitivity so that way you don't get a lot of cracks and pop pops and kind of it doesn't distort, the sound doesn't distort as much. And it also kind of cleans up a little bit. Um, I'll be having a series of videos come out where I kind of show off this feature because uh, I recorded an entire uh, Michael Shanker concert uh, with this camera. <laughs> it was just kind of an on-the-fly thing, and I had it on concert mode, and it turned out really well, and I was really close to the stage, too, so I was really surprised that uh, there was very minimal distortion. Um, the, the only thing I really noticed, uh, every once in a while, the cymbals on the drums would uh, kind of sizzle a bit more than usual, but other than that, I captured everything. Uh, some of the bass tones were a bit uh, flat, but... Uh, I'd say all in all is definitely a, a very good feature. And on here, as you can see, video modes, you know, I got normal and video. Um, you can adjust the exposure on the front camera. You can adjust, uh, you can have the light on or the light off. The little uh, front light. Blinding! <laughs> uh, so I just have it off to conserve battery power. Do that. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the gist of the camera. So go back to uh, regular mode. Um, I'll just let you have a quick look at all my apps. I don't really have a whole lot of them, but I do use uh, the ones that I do have. Like I have a Craigslist app, Fandango, which is great for movies, Google Goggles, which is <laughs> kind of a fun feature. Um, it just It's kind of a multi thing. It would take too long to explain. Uh, coffee Fix, which is kind of a, uh, like, like a mini Google Maps for uh, coffee places. Um... Some of these are just kind of added on, so I don't really know what all of them are. Um, just got a little, like, fun soundboards. Um, oh, this is a guitar tuner, which I think is really useful, especially if you're at Guitar Center and uh, you, you don't have access to a modeling amp or some kind of tuner, so you can just kind of tune it on the fly. Anyway, um, you got a little metronome. A uh, bunch of added on stuff. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're trying to access uh, your files, normally it was listed under files, but now it's listed under my files. Same with gallery. It's listed under my gallery now. Then music is my music. Uh, this music is like Google Music. I'm not really sure what it is. It's, uh, it's different. But anyway, um, On Tour is a cool little app. It lets you know uh, like bands that you like if they're uh, in your area or like bands that are in the same genre as they are, if they're in your area and when they're playing and where they're playing and stuff like that. QQ Player is uh, like a video player, obviously. <laughs> you can play music too. And uh, here's some fun little Rage Face stuff. Um, I have Skype and Skype Mobile, um, Speed Test, SoundHound, which is a great app. Like if you're in a store or whatever and they play a song and you don't know what, it, what the name of it is, you just uh, press SoundHound and have it near the speaker and uh, most of the time it works as long as the sound is clean and it's loud enough to where it'll pick up. Uh, let's see, I got Reddit up there, uh, Sudoku, do 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 do, Unblock Me which is another fun little app that uh, Sam introduced me to. It's just like a big puzzle game. Uh, let's see what else we got. Auto-Tune, Tune Me, uh, the Chip and Split which is a, a very useful app. Um, especially if you're in a town where uh, you go to a lot of sit-down restaurants, like uh, what me and Sam do, and you try to figure out the tip. You know, most of the time I just leave five bucks, but uh, if you're a little short on cash and you want to still leave a respectable tip, you know, definitely check this out. And uh, here's the tail end. You know, you got like a Wordsmith, uh, Words with Friends, um, Weatherbug, which is also useful, Voxer, which is kind of like a, it's like a I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's basically like a texting, but in uh, sound bites. It's basically like a walkie-talkie, pretty much. So, uh, I don't really use that too much, but I do have it. And uh, now we'll get into the feature you probably most want to see, and that is the power of the 4G network. Now, 
Uh, being the little tech nerd that I am, I uh, definitely do my research, and I found that the Verizon 4G network is the most powerful by leaps and bounds. But uh, just to give you guys a little idea of how fast it is, um, for, for those of you who don't know, I'm in uh, Point Loma, which is a suburb of San Diego. And uh, right now, just for my room, I only get about uh, two bars of 4G, so it's not at full strength, but uh, this is just a little taste. So obviously if you go downtown and stuff like that, it'll be a lot faster. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So run speed test, and we'll restart the test. <laughs> I freaking love those numbers, man. Just gets me every time, you know? Alrighty, so uh, if you can see the results, uh, the ping is 100 and, or 111 milliseconds. Uh, download is at 4.37 megabytes per second, and the upload is at 1.2 megabytes per second. Now, just to give you guys an idea of how fast this is um, compared to my old phone, which uh, ran on the 3G network, on a good day, I'd be lucky to just get under one megabyte per second download speed. Uploading is... Uh, <laughs> ridiculously slow. I think on a good day I'd probably get like 0.5 megabits per second. So uh, that just gives you an idea. And uh, I think we got some results here showing. Uh, yeah, I, I did the test a couple times just in uh, different locations. I think the highest I got was uh, downtown. I got, uh, let's see, the server says Oklahoma City for some reason. I don't know why, but this was in downtown I got almost 17 megabits per second download with uh, almost 9 megabits per second upload speed uh, that's the fastest I've gotten as far as testing goes but they average about probably 8 to 10 megabits per second on the download so uh, yeah that's just a small little uh, taste of the 4G network and uh, now another feature you guys probably want to see is the QWERTY keyboard which is the uh, trademark feature of the uh, the droid series so uh, let's start with that now now before we begin um, I do have to say that it doesn't really have that little um, little lip just to kinda let you pop it open so it's a bit harder you know the phone seems to be um, a bit more uh, how can I say this it's a bit more kind of like integrated I guess to where it's kinda hard to find the little little spot to slide your thumb on so uh, that's a small gripe, but uh, when it's not open, it actually looks pretty cool. So anyway, let's pop this bad boy open. Bam. And it slides forward automatically. So this is a, f oh, there it goes. This is a five row QWERTY keyboard. Um, it's obviously a lot different than my Joy 2 Global um, for the fact that it has uh, dedicated number keys up here. And uh, let's see, it's got a caps lock button, which is different. Um, let's just open up a random text here. Uh, let's just uh, start a new text message for me. Okay. And we'll just uh, type, and uh, it's pretty smooth. And I, one of the things I, I do like about it is that it seems like all the keys are individual. It's not like a big mesh thing like they had in previous series. So each key is very individual and I'm just typing random stuff right now and I uh, you know I, one of the problems that I do have is that the numbers are kinda hard to access but it's not that big of a deal and you know you got the little directional pads, the OK's and uh, little symbols like you can uh, whereas with the Droid 2 you can have the little uh, greater than equal signs that were already on the keyboard uh, they got moved to its symbols so there's a uh, the two symbols right there and you got like trademark or copyright and registered trademark and like the franc the yen uh, the little cent symbol stuff like that there's trademark right there so there's that um, there's a caps lock button which actually has a little light if you can see that there's the caps lock light it's off now so yeah this is the Andy song signing out for now thanking you guys for tuning in to this uh, 
unboxing. <laughs> I know, I, I just couldn't help myself. I was really ready for this phone, so uh, apologies if, it, if this isn't a uh, true unboxing, but you guys get the idea. Anyway, uh, also got to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys.